be praise you on this day, this moment of resurrection. Help us with your word to challenge us to come closer to you and leave behind all that holds us back in the tomb. May I become the lesser so you become the greater in this message. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So where'd that little acolyte go? Someone was like this big. I was walking up here. Where'd she go? It's Mr. Big Moment. <laughs> well, happy Easter. happy Easter. Happy Easter. I could drink Diet Coke again. No, no, I should. No, I should. <laughs> then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee. Our gospel today is filled with a lot of go, movement, action, leaving the tomb. We started off with a reading from Exodus. where We have the Israelites. We have this history of God who's leading us out of a tomb-like environment, out of death. The Israelites were in Egypt, multiplying too much, becoming these slaves to the Egyptian pharaoh. But they were living a comfortable life. They got three hot meals and a cot. They got their meals. They knew when their paycheck was going to be cashed. They knew when they were going to be fed, had a bed to sleep in. It's a lot better than roaming in the desert trying to find where the promised land is. You at least know that you got a bed over, you got a roof over your head. You got a bed. Life is good. Life is comfortable. Life is safe. The Egyptians are going to protect us, take good care of us, just as long as we work. Don't get out of line. Follow their ways. But God had a different story in line for the Israelites. God said, no, it's not what I have in store for you. And raised up the leader, Moses, and, uh, and said, you are going to lead my people out of here. And I am going to provide a miracle. I'm going to provide an act of God. And I'm going to lead you up to these waters. And I am going to part them. And he parted them. And they had to trust. They were scared, but they had to trust Moses and Moses' relationship with God to go into these waters. And they did. And they were baptized baptized in these sacred waters of God, taking this resource of water, the first thing that God created when he created creation. He took this big ball of water, right? And, and so he goes to that water, the same water that, that baptizes us, then we are going to say our baptismal vows in about 10 minutes. And he took that water and he split it with his power. And the Israelites went through the middle. And they were led and many want to stay by the shore. No, no, we don't want to go. Can we really trust God? These waters are not going to fall on us. Can we really trust this? Let's go back. We still got time. Life is simple and safe back here. Can we go? No. God says, go. Trust me. Go into the middle of the chaos. I will open the ways for you. Go into the middle and I will bring you there. And I will have an angel behind you, protecting you. And I will have a cloud or fire leading you. Divine signs that will be leading you. And they went through and they got through and then they got done with this incredible miracle. You say, wow, God is really on our side. But then they got scared. They lost, start to lose trust again. Why are we in this desert? Why are we walking in this desert for so long? Moses, we probably could have been back there. Well, you couldn't have any tombs out here? Like, why, why, why are we out here? Are we going to die? What's going on? And they started to lose faith, and Moses had to call upon God again. But they finally got there, and they finally got to Cana. They finally got to the promised land. They exited their tomb. But then they got a little arrogant. They started following other gods. Got a little relaxed again. Pattern repeats and repeats and repeats that we see. God creates, man sins. Then there is a God forgives, God restores, God renews, God has good life, and then man sins. 
See, all that is going to change and changes today if we choose to accept the love and grace that God gives us today. Because just like the story of, of the Israelites going through the water, we have this idea that this Messiah, finally, who came, who led us through this wilderness, and that is our Lent. We've been through, we've been through many days, 40 days of this Lent, and we took on disciplines, and we sat here, and we meditated, and we discerned what's getting in the way, where is my sin, where is my weakness, and we got to Holy Week. We had a glorious Holy Week, didn't we? Didn't we, choir? We had a glorious Holy Week. Yeah. We, yes. They were amazing. Sitting there last night, I was just in the back row. <laughs> and uh, just got to like meditate on the cross. The humility of the cross. Yesterday being Good Friday. We have this Savior, this God, who is not looking to be on this throne, but looking to put himself on a cross and say, wow, how arrogant am I that I have a God who loves me so much to crucify himself upon a cross. And I worry so much about my own status, about my own image sometimes. Humility, right? These powerful, Holy Week is powerful. And now, that power, that humble power is killed by the earthly powers. And we were stuck in this wilderness. Good Friday, what do you do? God is dead? Holy Saturday, what, what, what do we do today? What, who, who, what, oh, if you were the disciples back then, you're like, it's over. It's over. Just like every other Messiah who's come. Like Father Todd preached the other night, there was about 18 other Messiahs was around this time saying, hey, I'm a Messiah, had even bigger followings than Jesus. And every time they died, the people scattered. Oh, he's dead. Something changed with these Jesus people. They wouldn't go away. They wouldn't go away. And they're still here 2,000 years later because they said their Savior lived. Compared to all these other messiahs who came out preaching this word, follow me, I'm the messiah, the one that the scripture talks about. But they died. Rome crucified them, put them up somewhere, allowed the birds to eat their flesh. But Christ somehow, Jesus the Christ lived. This is crazy. And the people were renewed with their faith. So we've been given this gift that God does not die, that Jesus is the Messiah who is going to defeat sin and defeat death and whatever all that means. But now we have a choice here on this Easter day, this victory that we proclaim. As we sing these hymns, what do you want to do with the victory that Jesus gives you today? Because the scripture today first says, do not be afraid of my victory for you. Many times we're just too afraid to even accept that victory. Who am I to be saved by Christ? Who am I to be loved by this God? Not me. Too sinful, too weak. I'm not really worth that. So Jesus first says, the angel first says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then the second part is get out there and start doing the work. Because I think our issue sometimes as Christians is that we just stay in the tomb. Yay, we won. Jesus was resurrected. Yay, go on Facebook. He's alive, risen. Yeah, hashtag risen. I'm a Christian. Great. But you got to get out of the tomb. If you keep sticking around the tomb saying Jesus was resurrected, Jesus was resurrected. Okay, good start. Now what? Jesus didn't hang around in there. The angel said, hey, you can take a look. Look around. Yeah, he's gone. What's the next thing he says? Go. Go. Get out of this tomb now. Because your Savior ain't hanging around here. He ain't reveling in this time of saying, yes, Victoria, we beat it. We showed those Romans. We showed the emperor. We showed them. All those people who didn't believe. Even the disciples ran away. It's only the three Marys who stuck around. <laughs> so the three Marys could be the one saying, yes, we knew it. All the men are like, what, what, what's going on? Oh, 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 he lived? Oh, we were like, <laughs> But now we got to go. Now you got to get up and go. Now the Lord is saying, okay, I've given you this victory. But now you got to leave the tomb. So I'm going to give you power over that sin. I'm going to give you power over that, that, that dysfunctional way you might view yourself. 
I'm going to give you power over this dysfunctional relationship, this dysfunctional behavior. I'm going to give you power over that. If you trust in me, do you trust in me, Jesus is saying? Do you trust in me? Because if you do, let's get out of the tomb. Because I got new life for you. That's a lot of trust, though, because we got to let go of what makes us comfortable. We got to let go of maybe a comfortable way of life. But Jesus is saying, man, just trust me. Let go of those comfortable ways of going. Let, let go of just that normal routine of life. Because I am putting visions inside of you. I got big plans for you. I got huge gifts I am planting inside of you. But all you got to do is trust me. And that might take a lot of sacrifice. You might have to give up your time. You might have to give up your energy. You might have to give up old behaviors. You might have to give out going out with the boys for drinks. You might have to give out cruising around on the internet. You might have to give her up a lot of things. Because Jesus is saying, you feel that nudge from me? I got victory for you. Sin is no more. Sin is dead. Trust me. Don't trust fear. Trust my faith. So I don't care what chaos you're going through right now, Jesus says. What sickness might be holding you down right now? What broken relationship might be holding you down right now? What limited belief you have of yourself might be holding you down right now. Jesus said, don't, don't keep that in the tomb. Because that's just the beginning of the resurrection. Take my hand. I'm going to lead the way. And we're going to create new life here. Because I just showed, I took something as horrific as the cross. Blood splattered all over the place. I was beaten. And look what happened. Beauty. New life. Now, what we have to have is patience with that because we know the Israelites had to go through the desert. They had their time in the desert. Christians had to sit there on Good Friday and Holy Saturdays twiddling their thumbs saying it was over, sit in that sadness, sit in that darkness, and there is desert time, and we all know that. But Jesus is going to take you by the hand and almost, come on, get up here with me, brother. Take you by the hand and say, come on. I got, big, I got big plans for you. Don't, don't stay there. back there. It's comfortable, all right? Then he's going to put his arm around you and say, come on, buddy. You just keep on trusting me. And there is so much victory in your life. I know you better than you know yourself. Just keep on trusting me. Let go of those things that get in the way, brother. And then we're going to go this way because we ran out of space, all right? And we're going to go this way. And we're going to take you to the altar, brother. So every Sunday when we come to this altar and we break that bread, that's you accepting the victory that God has inside of you. So when you start having those beliefs, like, I don't know, man, I don't know if I can do that. Jesus is like, no, man, get out of the tomb. I got a resurrected life for you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Checks in the mail. So. <laughs> what do you want to leave in the tomb? Where is God nudging you? What's that anchor that's kind of holding you back? Uh, now, the miracle doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it does. But other times it's just a, it's just a saying, yes, God, I'm ready. Let me, let me not be afraid anymore. Let me not be afraid of these habits that hold me back. And let me just trust that if I give in to you, and it might be uncomfortable, and it might not be uh, 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 safe, it might be a little dangerous, it might be a, a little risky, but I'm going to trust God that if I feel you nudging me, and I feel you pushing me into this new ministry, into this new way of life, into letting go of some old habits that I know there is so much glorious victory. Tomorrow morning, we're baptizing seven people. Full immersion at Stewart Beach. And we did a little preamble tonight, and we did a little pre-service, and just seeing the looks on their faces, they're so excited to be going into this next stage of their life. Cheryl was just like, I just, I'm just ready to get over with. I just want to do it. She's like, I got a list of things I want to get into. <laughs> She's ready. The victory is here. Let's seize it. Risk big. Fear not, and let's build God's kingdom. Amen.